Your aircraft has great coffee too. It also has escape slides and life rafts, which the crew will operate in emergency. Non sequitur. Noun. A statement that does not relate in a clear, reasonable way to the previous statement. My first experience with the Spirit of Australia was on a recent early morning trans-Tasman service operated by a Qantas 737 from Christchurch to Brisbane in economy. The aircraft was painted in a classic livery and interestingly parked in front of a US Air Force C-130 Hercules that is specifically designed to fly to McMurdo in Antarctica. Trans-Tasman flights are difficult to place, as they're shorter than some domestic Australian flights yet marketed as a premium service in between domestic and international. I briefly stopped in the Mania Lounge, which served all the major airlines flying out of Christchurch and is also accessible with Priority Pass. For breakfast, there was a salty and porky frittata that was pretty good, though the croissants were lacking. Otherwise, standard light breakfast fare with yogurt, cereal, and coffee. Interestingly, the lounge did have shower facilities, which was surprising for such a small facility. Overall, the experience was fine and the staff incredibly friendly, though it's hardly something worth arriving early for. Finally, it was time to board. I have walked through countless jet bridges. Most of the time, the walls have ads for HSBC, or an airline, or a credit card. This was different. We were in the temperate rainforest, with sound. Layout is a standard 3-3 in economy, and each seat has Qantas seatback entertainment screens and USB charging ports. Although Qantas has a large selection of entertainment, the system is sluggish and the interface rather clunky. Why do I have to click on such small arrows? Theoretically, I could have also used the Qantas app on my phone to stream content, but sadly the Wi-Fi was not functioning. Qantas also distributes old-fashioned headsets to economy passengers, though they are about as flimsy as they look. The legroom was sufficient at 30 inches of pitch, but the seat padding was a little sparse. I was pleasantly surprised to see that meals were served on the 3 hours and 33 minute flight, but I shouldn't have been. While it's hard to mess up bacon, they somehow did. The eggs tasted powdered as well, though the signature muffin was appreciated. There had also been a fruit option, but they'd run out by the time they got to my row. Fortunately, the time flew by and soon we made our approach into Brisbane. So my thoughts on Qantas' trans-Tasman service are a bit mixed. If one compares it to domestic flights, it's pleasantly surprising. However, Qantas markets it as a more premium service, and in that regard it disappoints. Both Air New Zealand and Virgin Australia also market the service as more premium, and I'd be curious to see their offerings next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.